Workshop Topics Refurbishing a Myford ML7R Lathe Part 3 Reducing Backlash, General Lubrication and Dismantling the Electric Motor In lathe terms, particularly miniature lathes, the term backlash is being able to move the hand wheels without them actually doing anything for a while until they catch up with the thread. On this Myford, taking up the backlash is a very simple fix. A spanner on the dial, rotate the hand wheel in an anti-clockwise direction and once the dial assembly isn't locked by the hand wheel you can then rotate the dial in a clockwise direction to take up any play in the bearing. On this Myford ML7R I really was appalled at the amount of backlash on the cross slide and the compound slide. It was so bad that I wrote it off as just being very badly worn die nuts but not in the slightest. It just needed this very simple adjustment and here you see me adjusting the hand wheel on the compound slide. First of all undo the hand wheel then using a spanner on the flats on the dial tighten it up but not so tight that it doesn't move then re-tighten the hand wheel very firmly up against the dial part. After I did this 99.9% .9 of the backlash disappeared. It took a couple of attempts on the compound slide because the dial was quite tight on the thread. What I had to do was rotate the handle in a clockwise direction until the compound slide was right at the end of its travel. Once I did this and tightened up the dial on the lead screw, there was no significant backlash in the system at all, which makes me wonder how this lathe was actually used by the previous owner. This part of the lathe was set incorrectly. Time to look at lubrication. There are obvious lubrication points. These are the ones on the counter shaft one at each side and I'm filling them with my general lubricating oil that I get from a company called Hallett Oils. This is a very high grade lubricating oil and it's normally used for lubricating bearings on full size steam engines and I find it's ideal for this job too. Do not, and I repeat, do not use motor oil in this kind of an application. The lubricating oil really needs to be lathe spindle oil which is quite thin and finds its way around all the close tolerance moving parts. You can see grease nipples in various places on this lathe, there's one on the front for the lead screw. These are not for grease, they're for injecting oil into the system. Somewhere in the workshop I actually have an oil gun but I've lost it, I'm going to have to buy another one. When I was dismantling this lathe in its original location, I actually lost this key that goes in the lead screw. I remember the immortal words of my son-in-law Robert when he said, Make sure you don't lose that bit. I thought I'd put it in the box with the Allen keys, but apparently not. It was lost forever. No real problem here. I will accurately machine a new one using a piece of silver steel. In order to make it easier to move this lathe from its original location, I decided to remove the motor. And my original idea was to fit a new motor and a digital control system. And this was looking even more likely when I could not get the pulley off the end of the motor shaft. The aluminium pulley was really stuck fast, it was incredibly difficult to remove, but finally I managed to release it. Here's the plate on the original motor, and from my experience these are really good motors. There are oil cups on each of the bearings, so hopefully the bearings should be in good condition. Unfortunately, owing to the amount of pressure we had to put on the pulley, suddenly the main spindle had a lot of end float in both directions. So this sequence initially was just me being curious to see what had happened inside the motor. I'm releasing the fixings so I can take it off the mounting plate. These are the main earth wires or ground wires. The green one is the main earth wire back to the control box which finds its way to the plug. And the other braided one is the main earth for the lathe itself. Because the motor is mounted on rubber bushings, the main earth wire must connect to the motor which in turn is bolted to the lathe to earth everything. This motor is uncommonly dirty. It really is absolutely filthy. I don't know how it's got so bad. I have a sneaking feeling that this is not the original Myford motor because part of it's been painted blue. I'm really not sure about this though, it's just a guess. The lathe is wired to have a separate reversing switch and power comes from a contactor. Time I think to take the motor apart and have a look inside to find out after removing the pulley why it developed so much end float and why the plastic fan is fouling the case. This entailed removing all of the securing bolts which are very long and run the full length of the motor 
and then after a very gentle couple of taps on the front part, it came away from the body of the motor, complete with the armature. At this stage of the job, I fully intended to scrap this motor. I was only curious to find out what had gone wrong with it internally. This is a bit wrong. The grub screw that holds the pulley in place should really be used to hold a key in place. Instead, it's just been vandalised, and you can see the damage to the shaft caused by the grub screw deforming the keyway. This could explain why the pulley didn't want to come off. In this clip, I've lightly clamped the armature in the vise using the two pieces of brass angle to stop the vice jaws from marking the armature. I'm checking how worn the bearings are, and from what I can feel here, these bearings are not worn in the slightest, they're almost tight. Once I removed the cover, I looked into the hole, and yes, everything is in really good condition bearing-wise. This is the plastic fan fitted to the armature. It's clamped to the shaft using one very small Allen grub screw. The position of this fan and the position of the armature is determined just by a circlip in a very shallow groove. I use two large spanners side by side to lever off the pulley and obviously what's happened is it's opened up the circlip and the plastic fan impeller has moved backwards and that's what causes a sudden massive amount of end play on the motor's shaft. Here I'm trying the pulley back in place to see if it fits okay and no it's miles too tight. It was very obvious that the pulley was too tight, I didn't push it all the way on the shaft. Instead, I carefully pushed through a 5 eighths of an inch diameter reamer. Then I pushed in a piece of brass bar so I could mount it in the chuck. All I'm doing here is removing the damage that was caused by the ultraviolence required to get the pulley off the shaft. I chamfered the edge and then machined all the way down. So then the pulley looked almost like new. I may be being a bit anal with this, because you can't see it when it's fitted to the lathe. The point is, I would know that the pulley had been damaged. Once I'd finished remachining it, I slackened off the chuck jaws and pushed the piece of brass out of the pulley using my life centre. But I could only go so far down with the life centre, I finished the job off with a 5 8 reamer, because I know that fits in the hole. Time now to see if the remachined pulley fits the shaft, and it does indeed. I will make a key for it in due course. But that's it for now, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.